Hello, everybody. This is Christina Fasonic broadcasting live from Wheeling, West Virginia. And my associate, my colleague, Damian Dresick. How are you tonight, Damian? I am well, thank you, Christina. I am very excited to bring uh, some fellow Clarion faculty members to Wakona Live. Yes, that's very exciting. I feel like the, the wild horse or the left out person here because I'm the only one on the show tonight that's from California and not from Clarion. But well, we're all one now, right? I, I, I think this is, you know, what we're broadcasting is the future. <laughs> we, we, are, we are a harbinger of things to come. We're, we're, I think you might be right. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> that's kind of exciting if you think about it. Um, collaboration personified. <laughs> right, exactly. Now we've got um, great, we've got great guests tonight. We're super excited. We have you, you want to or do you want me? Oh, go ahead. All right, we got Dr. Mark Sanko and Dr. Jeffrey Diamond from uh, the place where I teach every day. Well, over the internet now, but normally teach every day. Uh, they are the hosts of the recently lodged podcast stories from the Pennsylvania wild. And they showcase important pieces of history uh, from sort of a, a Western Pennsylvania, West Northwestern Pennsylvania point of view. So maybe we could get Jeffrey and Mark onto the, the screen here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> hi, Mark, and hi, Jeffrey. How are you? Doing very well tonight, thanks. We have been looking forward to this ever since we met up, whenever that was. It seemed like, uh, was it summer? Yeah, it was nice out, I'll tell you that. It was hot, uh, so probably August, that seems about right. Something like that, and now, of course, it's winter again. Winter has cometh. <laughs> Um, and we are looking forward to hearing more about your podcast. I know that uh, Damien and I listened to a few episodes um, and we're really fascinated by the work that you're doing. And uh, he and I both really love history, especially local regional history. And so we really want to hear more about your storytelling. But we are going to disappear and let you talk to us and to the audience about the work that you're doing. All right. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Well, sounds great. So, you know, first we want to thank uh, Wakona Live for bringing us on. Um, you know, a lot of what we do, and and I'll throw it over here to Jeffrey in a, in a minute, but, you know, a lot of what we do at the Stories from Pennsylvania Wilds is tell stories about, you know, our region. Um, and, and, you know, it's these folk stories, um, stories of people who maybe aren't running for president or they aren't. Uh, running a major bank necessarily, let's just say. But they're, you know, the farmers and the shopkeepers and the people who work and live and play in these places that we call the Pennsylvania wilds. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to step all over Jeffrey here, so I'll, I'll see if he wants to add something. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I would say, to me, I always like to tell my students, history has two words, his story. I mean, it was gendered because of when it was formed. It's our story. So I agree with Mark, it's, that's a great lead in. It's, it's about everyone's story. And it isn't just the elite. To us, the way we all teach history is about the average person too. I always like to tell them the person on the street is as important as the person in the mansion. Um, and when you live in a region like Northwest PA, which is a little bit economically deprived and has other issues, it's important we get those voices to understand why people feel the way they do, to understand their history, what's influencing what's going on. And so we we do that through, we started to do that, I should say, right, Mark? Through right. some of these stories. And we'll talk about some of the future things we want to do too. But yeah, we definitely want to get other people's voices and their stories, right? Our stories. Yeah, and I think that's how this, this idea of a local history podcast blends really well with Wakona Live and the reading series that we're on tonight. Because, you know, the stories we tell are not all that dissimilar from, um, you know, poems and from uh, other sorts of English creative writing stuff. I mean, some of the stories you find in history are just phenomenal. You can't even believe it's actually true, right? Yeah. I mean, how many times, I, I know we both tell lots of stories in our class that illustrate, you know, my God, this actually happened to people. And, and this is how people reacted. You can make a Hollywood movie out of half the things. Um, that that we're saying, right? Exactly. Sometimes they actually have made films out of some of those things. Then they yeah. sensationalize it, and that's problematic. So one thing we always like to to do also is to show the 
a kind of story on multifaceted view, right? It's not just one person's view or one kind of group of people, but there's all these different ways that people look at a certain event. Maybe it's, we want to do things about the industry in the region, including coal mining and oil. How do different groups look at it? How did it impact workers, industrialists who owned it? But what about the people who live on the land that was also impacted environmentally? There's yeah. all these different stories and it's important to get those sort of stories um, out into those different perspectives. And you know, here's another thing too. You know, this is obviously about Appalachia, right? Yeah. Um, we don't get told the story of Northern Appalachia very often. Um, yeah. You know, Central Appalachia, West Virginia gets a lot of press because it, 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 what do you say Appalachia? That's what you think of, right? Maybe that or Eastern Tennessee. Um, but, you know, we are definitely part of that. We have the same sorts of industries and, you know, most historians tend to focus on major cities and, and major movements, but those movements impact these small places too. And so that's why, you know, if you're looking at our logo on the screen here, storage yeah. of Pennsylvania wilds, you know, we're really focused on this idea of what are the stories from rural Northern Western Pennsylvania that, you know, don't see the light of day very often, uh, but are really, as you know, we've been alluding to here, equally important to any other story that's going on. And, and to give you a little bit of hint, we've had, We've, we started doing a podcast dealing with, actually right before the pandemic, um, it was about the financial crisis of the 1930s associated with the depression. And we talked about uh, a woman who owned a bank who actually refused to listen to the government's regulations about closing the banks to prevent running on it, which was you know very brave and also problematic. Um, and we got, we got switched by the pandemic, but we were starting to tell these voices about people in the area from that kind of perspective. And we originally were also supposed to do one on the 19th Amendment to talk about how we had a student who's going to be doing this, which is about the women's right to vote movement that was happening here, the suffragette movement in the 19 teens, um, and how important this area was. We always think of Philly and Pittsburgh, but this area was actually key to it passing in Pennsylvania, for instance. These were the areas that supported it more than even the cities for a large extent. So these areas are important and these stories are important, just to give two examples. Yeah, they are. And, and I like that you're sort of talking about kind of what we've already said in our podcast or where we're going. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we're we're university professors um, and, and we deal with lots and lots of students all the time. And you know, part of this idea for this podcast came about not just for us, Jeffrey Diamond and Mark Sanko, to tell the stories of people who live here. But we look at all of our students, especially our history majors, that are doing great research projects on topics around these uh, parts. And so we thought, why not highlight them? Why not highlight our great students and their work? And, and you know, in some ways, when you write a semester long paper, you do it for the grade and then you move on. But, you know, if there's something else out there, if you can write that paper and know that, hey, I might get my research on a podcast, you know, maybe, maybe that's a little incentive or, you know, at the very minimum, we get to share the cool work that's being done by our students, too. Exactly. Yeah. It's always good to do that. And I think that's to me, that's really important is to show that history matters and that it's valuable. So they don't just running a paper for a class. And it's fine to do that as part of a learning ex exercise, but they're seeing some practicalities that they can apply to jobs after. Even if they don't do history, you have to know how to present. Right. And so we are doing the same thing as if we were a comm class, you could argue, but we're doing it through the discipline of history. But we're also actually because we're doing history, we're also focusing on historical issues that are important for them to understand and show. So it's it's kind of multifaceted in opportunities. And yeah, we do try to decenter ourselves as much as we can, especially when students come on, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of odd because you yeah. know, we don't get chance to banter all that much. Uh, you know, we, we set up a few minutes at the start and a few minutes at the end of each podcast for ourselves, which yeah. is problematic because the two of us could probably talk for four or five hours straight. Uh, yeah. And we won't bore all of you with that tonight. Uh, no, no. <laughs> but we do have a lot of banter that goes on before and after. And we do it with our guests to try to warm them up a little bit to so make sure that they're kind of calm. And I think it does help. And it's just part of the job. It's kind of the fun part of the job, at least. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, and we did, uh, so, you know, the episodes we do have, we have the banking crisis uh, in, in the 1930s. And then we have a series of podcasts about the pandemic. And so, you know, that hit right, like basically maybe three, four weeks after our first episode was produced. 
uh, and we had to change gears like everybody else did. Um, and so we, we changed to talking about the pandemic from both a virological standpoint, but then a couple on the history of it. Um, you know, with one of our colleagues, Dr. Martha Robinson, talking about the history of pandemics in general. And then um, with Lou Bernard from Lockhaven talking about, you know, the history of the Spanish flu here in this region, in northern Appalachia. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but, man, I, I wish you would have listened to those podcasts because we, we laid out what's going to happen in the fall. And here it is. All the historians across the country have been talking about this is coming. This has happened in 1918. Um, Pennsylvania is literally following the same model it followed in 1918 for a different different virology, but it doesn't really matter. It's how human. What our point was this, and what history is about is how humans react to this, because we have influence over our lives. Maybe not completely, but we do have influence over the outcomes, and it seems like we've given up that influence right now to some extent. And we're seeing I don't know about other areas, but in this area of Pennsylvania is actually having a surge. Um, in the virus, and it's getting it's getting to the point. There's a lot of students on campus now that have it, so it's getting to the point. It's going to have a major impact. It might even do some shutdowns because people are not following basic guidelines, which they had in 1918 too. And if you listen to that episode, that third episode of the uh, pandemic series that we ran, it's about this time, October, November, that we were talking about. Totally. So it, you know, I hate that we called it, but we kind you know we kind of it was quite topical. Um, but then, yeah, so hopefully, you know, our plan is if you're out there watching this live, you know, one, we're, we're absolutely happy to take whatever requests you have. If there's a story you want us to tell, please let us know because we're happy to research that, maybe yeah. give it to some students as an idea to research in a class and then talk about it. But, you know, otherwise, uh, our plan is to hopefully get back onto this topic of the 19th Amendment. Um, and, and we're at the centenary of it. Uh, we're kind of at the end of it, but uh, yeah. it was, as you all might be aware, an election not too long ago. It seems like it was about three years ago, but it was only six like days, seven days. Yeah, not, yeah, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so it's a, you know, I, we're, Jeffrey and I are both hoping that we can get that podcast finished and out by the end of the year so that at least, you know, it stays pretty topical. and. Yeah, we've had some some technical issues dealing with the kind of uh, distancing and COVID is why, but it would have been done. But we also have, we're also planning future podcasts. One is uh, we're going to deal with this real similar time period. We're thinking about dealing with prohibition. That's come up a lot in other sorts of things we're doing because we're working on the 19 teens to 1930s right now. Um, and so it had a large impact on breweries in the area. And so we are we are interested in that and how the social impact of that particularly plays out even to this day. Plus, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Mark can speak for himself. I like beer, so it's always a good thing to relate your interests yeah. um, historically. Yeah. Oh, Underground Railroad. That is actually we were thinking about that as well because Brookville was an important part. I think one of our the hosts was mentioning it as part of the Underground Railroad, particularly getting people to Canada or at least New York State. Um, and so that's an important part. We are thinking when we go to the 19th century. So there's a lot of different topics. And when I talked previously about industry, we're going to focus more on industry too, both um, oil, uh, with this gas now, coal and timber, which are really important to this area. So try to get these kind of stories and try to see where it makes sense of where we are now. Yeah. And why are we where we are now in terms of this part of Pennsylvania and arguably West Virginia and other places too, right? Why are we in this post-industrial yeah. landscape that seems to have actually really, in a sense, not been able to come to terms with the economic situation? Right. Yeah. So these yeah, are and, and yeah. you know something like the Underground Railroad. There's so many good stories to be told with that too, right? I mean, especially if you can find. I don't know what exists out there for the Underground Railroad. To be very honest with you, in the Pennsylvania Wilds, I know it came through here. Yeah. Um, and it would probably take some research, and that's that would be awesome because I'm sure I there has to be some fantastic story that you can tell. Um, and, and, you know, to sort of like swing back around to this idea of storytelling, I mean, that's what makes interesting a lot or <laughs> makes interesting, makes history come alive and makes it interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, I think we've all had probably the experience if we you know gone to college where you have that one history professor that turns their back to the, the to the <laughs> student 
writes on the chalkboard, right? And you fall asleep. Even I, I did, and I oh, loved yeah, it. Of course. I know where it's uh, I did too. <laughs> so it's it's that storytelling that um, really engages students, but engages the public too. And that's why history lends itself so well to podcasting. Yeah, um, yeah. doing it right, I think. And we like to, I mean, in our classes, we do this. We're trying to do this more and more on the podcast, involve the audience or the students, right, with that story, right? So they're, we're telling it as you're part of it. And you, it's sort of, that's how it also comes to life. As opposed to a dry sort of, oh, this person was born, blah, blah, blah. They did this and they died, which is boring. I mean, we're historians. Yes, I fell asleep to those kind of teachers who turned their back to us too. And I would never do that. I said, no, I actually sit like in a yoga position facing them the whole class. So I, they know I'm with them for one thing. And it's actually important. We're trying to do that. I know Mark is too. And we're trying to do that in our podcast as a way to have the audience part of it. And we like so we like the idea of the Underground Railroad. We have just so many different things we can focus on. And yeah, we do welcome different stories. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I don't know how much more. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I was going to say. Don't know how much more you want us to keep talking. I'm, I'm sure we can keep going around and around in circles. Well, we've heard some really cool stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, I, I go ahead, Damien. I'm sorry. Oh no, I really enjoyed um, uh, your podcast that dealt with um, the influenza epidemic. I think it's really, um, as somebody who's written a historical novel, which I'll say more about in a sec. Um, okay. I, I, one of the things that really compels me is when you have those kind of that kind of capital H large scale history that's in a general history textbook and then sort of dig into that and see how that's affecting um, individual people. Um, I loved your story about the parade in Philadelphia and, and how wow. it's, you know, how this sort of resonates through time. It's ex as you guys say, it's exactly the same uh, kind of thing that, that people are, no, let's just do stuff anyway. <laughs> no, it's true. And, and remember, we were, I think I was I was talking about Pittsburgh, and Mark was talking about the local community. We have we have leaders at the time opposing the governor's will. It was a different governor and a different political party, but it was the same debates. You can't close businesses, and that's totally understandable. But if you don't get the the, the virus under control, it's just going to draw this out and make it all worse. And that's kind of then what's happening. So we have these same debates going back and forth to this day particularly around bars, schools, and other places like that, that are just grounds for disease, but important places, we're humans. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, I've been reading this book called something like The Last Town on Earth. And it's so good because it, it was written in like 2006, okay. but it's about a community um, out West that decided to close itself off during the Spanish flu. And they didn't want anybody coming in. They didn't want anybody going out. And it created this big debate. The flu got in. All these people died. I mean, it was just uh, everything that we're dealing with today was what they were dealing with then. And it, it is so, it's almost eerie because some of the same words that people are saying right now about wearing masks, about, um, uh, it, you know, keeping people in quarantine, all of that. I mean, it's like the same exact terminology, the same yeah. word choice. It's really phenomenal um, when when you look at that. It's like, how did he know? I'm like looking over my shoulder. Is he a time traveler? Because it's fiction. It's fiction yeah. that's rooted in in the history of the time period. But exactly. and I was I was also really intrigued when you were talking about um, suffragists and uh, the role that this part or your part in the southwestern Pennsylvania played in that the passage of the amendment, my students just did a, a digital story on Myersdale and suffragists and the suffragist movement. And I didn't know that there was a bell that traveled yeah. around and they weren't gonna ring this bell until women got the right to vote and the students end their digital story by ringing the bell. Isn't that great? Oh, that's clever. Yeah, it's like, I mean, really one of my favorite stories of the semester. But the, yeah. this justice bell was really a powerful symbol. It was a model of the Liberty Bell. Yeah. Pennsylvania. What a great symbol of liberty. And then you're going around saying, well, why half the population can't vote? Why did we fight a revolution? It was a really smart move. And it did. We see that. Our student will talk about it. It did help change some public opinion around here, enough to get people around here to support it, which is all you need, right? You don't have to get yeah. 100%. You just need to get enough support to have a groundswell. And enough yeah. is enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, Damien. No, no. <laughs> One of the things that I thought was super compelling, uh, and maybe I 
come to this sort of bias also as a professor, but the idea that you guys have students involved in, in the podcast, mm -hmm. that to me brings a whole other dimension um, to what you're doing and that kind of engagement. Um, and just to sort of, as you guys were saying, um, you know, that the idea, the, the audience for your work as a student isn't one faculty member. Right. It's, I can, you know, go out and, and bring what I've been doing to a larger public. And I think that charges students, you know, um, in both meanings of the word. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think when all of this began, well, we're all part of the PASHI system. So we're all we're all hearing the same sort of words. But, uh, you know, systemness. Right. And they wanted <laughs> there's been this big push for us to work across departments with other with other faculty. And um, and so our thought was, let's work with Com, like the communications yeah. department, and let's get their students in on the production side of it, and our students in on the storytelling side of it. Uh, so we had this great plan. Of course, coronavirus derailed all of it, but um, there's always you know, the there's year. always gonna. We'll get back to it. We'll get back. Yeah. To it. Um, yeah. No, I, I think if you're a student, right, and you're thinking all I got to do is get an eighty percent of this paper, and I get a C in the class, and I'm happy. Or, you know, if I do really well on this paper, someone out there might actually listen to my words. I, I, that, you're right, Damien. I think that, that totally changes the way you approach that paper and that project. Exactly. I, I see. I just tell my students, imagine you're telling your family, right? Something they care a little bit more than just maybe telling it to, to myself or Mark or to you, Damien, or to you, Christina, right? Because, yeah, they're right. It's just for the grade. And then they start realizing, oh, what do I want to tell now? I want people, because you want to look good, right? If you go on a podcast, you kind of want to look a little bit better than maybe submitting that paper that you wrote an hour before class. It was, it was due. It was due at 11 a.m. So I, I finished it at 10 and uploaded it. It's all great. And we all read those papers, those kind of papers. And you know what it's like as a teacher to read a paper that way. Whereas this one, I see the students who are like our student now, she is a good student anyway, which is partly why we picked her first, because she would be a good model to follow. But she's always sending us drafts, which is exactly how you learn. In fact, well beyond what we asked for, yeah. which is actually uncommon, to be honest with you. It's usually pulling teeth to get a draft, let alone she's just giving us drafts. So um, so I'm giving a shout out to Autumn if you're listening, Autumn. But, um, but really, I think it's because she cares how she's going to come across, as too, right. as much as she is oh, a yeah. conscientious student. So... Um, People are interested in the Underground Railroad. You guys are interested in bringing more stories about prohibition and about the extraction industries. What else? Because before before we before we uh, we 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 depart for tonight, what else can people expect to see? Or, I'm sorry, expect to hear uh, <laughs> when they tune into the podcast um, stories from Pennsylvania Wilds. So I think our uh, our hopeful plan for the next couple episodes and that'll take us through the winter and into the spring are going to be student focused. Um, you know, obviously we have this one in the 19th Amendment. Uh, you know, I have another student who's writing a paper right now about the Army Air Corps at Clarion University in 1943, and, and uh, which is a fantastic paper. And so I think that'll be really cool. Um, and so we'll probably, to be very honest with you, keep it local and keep it focused on what our students are doing simply because it's we have no idea what the spring's going to hold as far as what can we get our hands on research wise where can we travel to um but i you know i think in the future we would like to do sort of i think industry next you know i'm a labor historian uh jeffrey is a historian of the empire the british empire but also of industrializing empire right um so, you know, I think that's where we naturally gravitate to. Uh, but yeah, the Underground Railroad, I'm sure we'll get around to that. Probably not this coming spring, but spring 2022. Keep an eye out. Yeah, it's right on. We're, there's a lot of different stories we could tell. We're still, and yeah, we this because of COVID, it's hard to do some of the stuff we even wanted to do. We don't know if we could have those meetings or how we're going to do it fully yet. So even courting with students right now has been a little bit more difficult than we'd like because students really aren't on campus. Although Autumn, the one who's doing the 19th Amendment is around. So we are hoping to do a, for this, yeah, for the fall and early spring to do student stuff for now. But we are open to different stories. Yeah, we do gravitate to industry, but I think we gravitate it partly because of where we are and how industry and how the economy is so, was so shaped by it. I mean, they were in the oil region, right? This is where oil was really first developed as a use for an industrial product worldwide. 
not just Pennsylvania. I mean, this is not a small, it's this region may have fallen by the wayside in terms of people's focus, but it's important historically and they should actually honor that and also look at the problems of that. And that's why we were thinking about that. And because of also the debates today are still about that. Right? If we can just bring this back and maybe we need to rethink that actually. And history can offer those lessons about, well, maybe we need to rethink a new kind of industry that would work here that would be better for everyone. Um, I'm not sure everyone here has really thought that yet. And that's part of the economic problems of Northern Appalachia. I think I had mentioned before. So it's kind of trying to be practical too and sort of relate to people who want to think about other issues outside of just history in that way. So yeah, I guess we have a bias you could say about it, industry, but we are uh, thinking about other topics too. No, right on. I, I think it also could be a recruiting tool. You know, if yeah. you want to study history, do, do some stuff at um, podcasting, go to Clarion. Yeah, exactly. Kind of thing on the website, yes. Well, All right. Well, thank you guys so much for yes. telling us about the stories from Pennsylvania Wilds podcast. Thank yeah, you. Very much. Awesome. Awesome. And like Damien said, we're blazing a trail of systemness. We're all one now. And I'm yes, the I'm the Cal U representative tonight. So. We just need someone from Edinburgh here, right? That's uh, right. We need an Edinburgh faculty member. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you both for coming on and um, have a great rest of the semester. We're almost at the finish line. All right. Yeah. And we will see you all next Thursday. Yep. At 8 p.m. Yep. Same place. So thank you all. See you next week. All right. Take Bye -bye. care. All right. Thanks, Mark Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you very much.